To start your one of the stars of Cell A and this mini series is being adapted from a popular crime novel. When you're working on a project that's existed in another medium, how much do you use that source material in your preparation and as a frame of reference, or do you approach the script as its own body of work? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Thank you. Um, so, so I did read the the book because I just felt it was sort of it felt important to me. Mm. Um, just, I don't know, because I guess, yeah, you just want to try and pay as much respect to the sort of original creators as you can. Um, and it was so helpful, it, even though uh, John in the book is quite different in many ways to um, in the TV series. So he's much he's a bit older in the in the book. He's a father. Um, he's a slightly um, sort of slightly darker figure. Um, he's got slightly more demons. Um, but what I really found helpful in the book is that throughout the whole thing, he's completely traumatized. Um, he's just through, he is just in a state of trauma the whole time. Um, and I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. And I thought that'd be a really uh, uh, interesting and, and challenging thing to try and take on and bring to the show of like a person who's just constantly in a state of trauma without it being uh, exhausting or sort of boring for an audience to try and find the sort of, variety in that but that's kind of um the 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 place where he's sort of coming from so I found that really helpful from the the book and then yeah I think when you're on set you just you have to kind of come from the uh the script throughout your career you've played such a wide range of characters what was it about John and the script in particular that resonated with you and there's so many twists and turns what was your initial reaction yeah um I think it was just like it was really no I felt I was I felt just really um privileged and lucky to get to play a part like John um so I was glad they wanted me <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> uh, that was amazing and uh, you know I think I think because the character feels so different for me and like so there was that I don't know indulgent actor in me mm. that wanted to sort of try and take that on um and then um I got to meet with Yuhan the director who was so exciting and he was just sort of, he was, he's a real sort of film nerd and like, he was just making really exciting sort of references about the character and about kind of the direction of the show. Um, and so I think that got me really excited. And then I saw um, Mimosa who plays Mariana. Yeah, I saw yeah. her act and I thought she's one of the best actors I've, I've seen. So the chance to get to work with her was, was a huge, huge uh, point for me. And yeah, she was, she was just amazing. Oh, but there's so many stellar performances across the board. You know, there's a community of people who come together to support John when he doesn't have the strength for himself. Who are the people in your own life who supported you on this journey as a storyteller? Did you channel any of those relationships into the dynamics that we see in the series? Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. I found a really special relationship with Victor, who plays my dad. I found that mm -hmm. a really, really, really special relationship. He reminds me a lot of my uncle. So, and that was... Um, quite sort of an easy thing just I felt that sort of immediate um connection with Victor it's I mean it's a completely different sort of stratosphere of you know of, of experiences but I guess you know um you know sometimes uh when you go into acting that could be incredibly challenging and you know there's moments when you get you know low and stuff like that so you know uh, yeah it'd be hard not to say my parents have been the sort of the main sort of uh supporters mm -hmm. for me and so yeah, I think it's, it, it, and there are some scenes that are in the show, particularly towards the end, that even though, uh, you know, luckily I've never experienced anything sort of close to that, you have had those stories, like a sort of, you know, saying goodbye to a loved one, which mm. you, you think might be for the last time, you know, those kind of, um, those sort of moments, which I guess everyone's pretty much experienced yeah, in life, kind of th those sort of, moments sort of just by osmosis sort of fed into uh particularly the sort of the later scenes yeah i've had a question about those later scenes later oh, in the interview yeah. but you know, <laughs> john also has such a transformative journey throughout this story what are some of the character choices and decisions that you made to show that contrast in his evolution before and after um prison? yeah um so i guess i sort of if I, I was like my big um thing about John it, I think it's like kind of like an overarching sort of uh, theme or idea for him was I think he's never felt uh free I don't mm. think he's ever I think he's constantly he's never had 
um, ownership of his life. Um, and so obviously in the beginning, he was kind of just rebelling against that and sort of over uh, overcompensating and sort of, you know, projecting a sort of an idea of himself, like of, he was projecting an idea of sort of toughness and sort of, uh, because he felt viewed in a certain way, he was sort of like a lot of us do, he was trying to, he was living up to those. Yeah. He was portraying those expectations. Um, and then I think because of the, the trauma of, uh, of 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 the, of the prison of death row i think he's sort of you know he's almost like someone who's sort of had shell shock or something like that he's kind of it, there's a part of him that's kind of that when he went to prison slightly died and i think he is a sort of much mm. uh i don't know he's a much sort of um he's yeah he's a sort of i think he's a yeah, i think in a way i think he, I mean, he's a better person but i think he's a more uh, repressed or you know I think mm, yeah. and I think I think the main thing for me was like uh, the overarching thing and sort of when I was trying to let ideas hit me was just that feeling of like uh, yeah he's never felt free he's never felt any sense of freedom or choice which uh, towards the end he starts to sort of you know go you know it, these are the only choices that I can make but I will yeah. I will make them and there's uh, there's a certain sort of liberation in that for him that's that's where he can try and find his freedom definitely you're so good at toying the lie with that without giving out any spoilers oh, sorry yeah. <laughs> no, yeah no it's fantastic <laughs> i've seen all six episodes so like, i know what you're talking about you know oh, you're, great, also, great. You, you're also sporting an american accent for this project how challenging was it to adapt that dialect when you're not filming are you staying in that accent how easy is it to oh, jump in God, yeah it? oh I, I stressed about it so much it was definitely the thing i, I from the beginning, I stressed about, you know, as much as like any of the intense scenes, just because I find it really pulls me out if I think someone, um, uh, if I if I know that's not someone's voice. Um, mm. Luckily, though, my uh, sister's boyfriend, Caleb, uh, is a Midwest boy and, and a very sweet Midwest boy. So I got him to record all, <laughs> all my <laughs> lines. Um, uh, took advantage of his sort of generosity and then we had an amazing uh, uh voice coach accent coach rebecca on set who was the coolest person in the world but just unbelievably helpful and then but now i felt like my voice uh dropped a few sort of octaves mm. <laughs> by doing the accent just because it was she was like really helpful and just going like where the sort of the voice sits is far lower than someone uh, a londoner might might be um but yeah i think that was just something i but it was it's was interesting i think i don't know maybe maybe i don't know if you guys just dis, disagree but i think americans are far less um gatekeepery about the american accent than mm. i think english people are i think you're much kinder to <laughs> english people doing american accents than we are to you even though i think Americans can do brilliant English accents. I think you're a lot, you're a lot, you're a lot nicer to us. I feel you're much more, you're, yeah, you're much, you're, you're much kinder than we are. We're, we're yeah, we're much more gatekeepery. <laughs> you did a fantastic job with the accent. You know, like you were saying earlier, you know, there's so much vulnerability that you have to tap into for a role like this, which you brought so much nuance to. As an actor, how did you create the space for yourself to dive into those more emotional moments? It's weird because I, I, I feel quite, I believe quite strongly in like, you know, you're in a, a working environment. So you have to try and make everyone else who's working job as easy for them as possible. And um, so I don't want to be like going, oh, I need to feel terrible. Therefore, I'm going to sort of impose that uh, atmosphere onto everyone else. Um, but luckily, the sort of incredibly intense scenes were all um, at the end. So I was saying that like, hopefully I'd, uh, I'd, um, um, established that I wasn't a complete douche to people that I could you know just take myself off when those scenes were coming up just to sort of get mm. into a into a headspace because I'm yeah I, I I don't think I'm I'm not a good enough actor to sort of be chatting and then just when it's action I can sort of turn it on I wanted to try and be as much in that headspace but also um they had done the set so incredibly that when you're in that environment and you're sort of you know being chained up and you see um, the death chamber, it's quite easy for your imagination just to sort of take over and just to sort of, you know, because you're going, oh my God, this this actually happens to people. It's quite, um, 
it's quite easy just to uh to feel it and then mm. you know you're around amazing actors who are giving you so much that you're not having to sort of go you're able to be present with them and like not put pressure I guess that was the yeah. thing I didn't want to put any pressure of like oh my god there's I have to feel a certain way I have to, or I have to convey something I just was you know I, I thought about it but then when you're in the scene with the other amazing actors you kind of just let whatever comes happens and obviously that's when I think you get the best film acting is when the actors surprise themselves mm -hmm. um, and I was lucky enough to be in an environment where I felt that could happen great answer you know like you're just saying you know there's such stellar performances across the entire cast and there's such a great chemistry that comes off the screen and John has very specific relationships with each of them how were you able to build that while filming during a pandemic yeah it's um uh it's you know, yeah well I was lucky in that it was it's one of the nicest sets I've been on in terms of the crew were unbelievably uh funny and just lovely and then the actors it just we got I think because we were all because I think due to COVID you all had to sort of stay in Estonia you couldn't go mm -hmm. you couldn't fly back and forth as much um so you just really got uh we just yeah just got really really close with everyone and um so like uh Lily who plays Elizabeth I had done uh, another show with her previously and I sort of see her I see her sort of like every week so I kind of that means that was very um immediate and then someone like Mimosa who's just such a she's so charismatic and she's just such an impressive personality and but also kind of she had filmed a lot in Estonia so she was showing me around she was kind of you know making me feel unbelievably um welcome that yeah I just felt that connection really really quickly um and then uh people like Victor who I said like who plays my dad he's just got this amazing kind of uh he, he's, I mean, he's just an amazing actor, but he's just got this amazing sort of emotional capacity. Mm. And so just sort of seeing that, that kind of just brought stuff out of, out of me. So yeah, it was, yeah, there wasn't a person who I didn't, wasn't like absolutely joyful to work with. And this role also seems like such an exercise in stamina, where there are moments that are going to hit audiences in the gut for you as the actor responsible for bringing that to life was that ever a daunting task and what's that decompression like after a day of filming yeah um it's a really good question um yeah well it, no it was it was definitely daunting because it was like and pretty much that was I think that was the first time in terms of like I've d d done other shows but uh you this was the first time where I was like I was pretty much filming every single day yeah um and doing sort of you know yeah in, in intense sort of scenes um yeah dark scenes and I think um uh, yeah you had to sort of try and look after yourself as best you could just because you sort of didn't want to be completely sort of drained after after one day um and uh but no I, I mean we I, I felt like particularly after the last uh sort of last few weeks of filming I was sort of I was completely I was <laughs> sort of like before and yeah. after photos that I looked <laughs> I, 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 I didn't look great <laughs> I sort of yeah when I first started I was looking quite healthy and then yeah by the end I was yeah looking pretty pretty sallow and um yeah no I, I was I was in need of some like of a little bit of a holiday afterwards <laughs> Yeah, I was emotionally drained watching the six episodes in the best way possible, you know, oh, as this miniseries makes its way to American audiences. Is there a scene or episode that you're really uh, excited for them to see? Um, I think I, I would say the end, just because I think it, I, I think it's, it sticks the landing, in my opinion. Mm. I think it, it commit, well, it commits to, it commits to the idea of what the show is about. Yeah. And it, yeah, it really, it stays true to that idea. And like, um, I think, you know, sets up that you, how in other shows you might think it might go, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is not that type of show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think hopefully just by the end that people will go, oh, it's, you know, really, um, yeah, stuck to its guns. Yeah, it was a very shocking ending. I got one final question for you. Outside of this project, what's next for you? And you're such a dynamic storyteller. What's left on your bucket list? Oh God. Um, so at the moment, um, God, uh, this, yeah, there's still so much I want to do. I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, 
yeah, I try. I, maybe something slightly lighter would be <laughs> would be nice next time. Um, and then, yeah, but I think it's one of those ones that I just feel so lucky with the kind of the jobs and work I've come. And then like, and also just not trying to uh, strategize too much. And because I think then if you, I don't know, go, oh, well, this will be good for my, I don't know. It, just, it will never work out like mm. that. So I will, I will kind of just wait to see like what comes and like, you know, I'll, I'll always be grateful. <laughs> yeah.